You want a line or two, Runty? Hmm? Nidalee ho, neighborinos. Your friendly neighborhood Breath of the Wild hater here, continuing with their second impression of Tears of the Kingdom. Focusing on a general impression of the world while traveling to Rito Village, then finishing on the Divine Beat oh sorry, Storm Wind Arc. I'll try to make the next one be all three of the other dungeons, but you know, life happens. Either way, we'll see if my opinions change by then during this first playthrough since this is still just my first impressions. Also, you know, like and subscribe, etc, etc. So let's start re-exploring Breath of the Wild's map. We're told pretty early on to head to Rito Village as it's the best chance we have to find Zelda, with the now relevant newspaper being a thing. Okay, cool, some direction. Sucks how I feel that's worth mentioning since, you know, Breath of the Wild just ignored all possible direction. However, it did say go to Kakariko at the start, so, you know, positives, I guess. Speaking of, there are new enemies right outside Fort Town, with a logical placement for their beds since they hang from the ceilings. Neat. But, uh... Gosh, these positives won't last long. Remember when I said I wondered if my praise for Fort Town was just being happy that Tears of the Kingdom cleared the bar that was on the floor from Breath of the Wild? Well, here's a monster camp with walls and a bokoblin wearing armor and there are trash piles and simple food grilled on a fire and a dude that's been captured because he was trying to study the blood moon and got too close to monsters. That's great, but... Uh... Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Let's just jump right into a conclusion here. I cannot praise this world, or at least so far. I can't, in good faith, say, Good job, Nintendo! You were able to make a completely bog-standard open world with a couple of USP gimmicks! Proud of you. Like... No. After six years of development, releasing your unfinished beta build to unfathomable financial success, and six more years of tweaking that entire first game to build off of it, at best, Nintendo achieved the lofty goal of another open world game. Sure, there were some neat things, like having this whole underground area where I have to manage my limited light bulb where I met my first Yigadu, which made sense since the opening was covered with Ganon goo. But, you know, Skyrim eventually had black reach. At best, you're only doing a bit better 12 years later. I mean, you've already done dual worlds before Zelda, so instead of slipping into walls, we go down a hole. And I like that there are some new enemies, including some I'm simply too weak to fight at the start of the game. I literally jump out and then I'm like, okay, try to run. Nope. Grab. I like the talus being ridden. That's cool. It's great how Impa is actually up and doing things instead of sitting around saying, Save Zelda! Over and over. This dude who's not too fit being trapped in a hole he can't climb out of was a fun little distraction. We. It's alright, we got it, we got it. We got it. Oops. You're on your own. Good luck, man. Sorry, I probably wish you giving me a f rupee or some sh anyway. See ya. I enjoyed this little mini game over here. Oh, come on. That was just not the worst thing. I appreciate the newspaper actually mattering and having its own 3D model now since it's a good way to have players naturally learn about the world. But so you have some enemies and some of them are hard. Well, that's nice that there's a place that was too strong and I gotta, I gotta get the heck out of there. I don't mind that. I mean, it's the absolute bare minimum of what should be expected of any open world game, but whatever. It took you 12 years of development to find out how to use one enemy differently. You have important characters get up and do things in the story slash world to show they're important. There's a neat little side quest like any other open world game. There's a mini game in a Zelda game. You actually put in a reason for something that didn't make sense in Breath of the Wild and charged me $70 now instead of just 60. Like my subscriber 7 Miles Davis said on one of my community posts, sure, there are some cool things, but is it six years cool? Is it a $60 beta I had to test for Nintendo and $70 for the rest of the game cool? See what I mean? Any positives are basically negatives when you put them into context. Is Tears of the Kingdom doing better than Breath of the Wild? I mean, sure, in a vacuum, but is that really a high bar to clear? A sequel improves upon the original? No way, never would have guessed. Like, at best? 
Tears of the Kingdom is bringing the already full price Breath of the Wild to average. And I mean, average is fine. You can have fun with average, but average is not a 10 out of 10. And is it worth $130 plus DLC after 12 years? Like during the trek to Rito Village, I made sure to pass the places I called out in my previous Breath of the Wild videos to see if there was any more specific improvements like with Port Town. And guess what? They're at best, just like any other location you'd find in any open world game, and at worst, there's still nothing. That stone bridge I complained about in part 2 and 3.9? It's got a little monster camp there now. Okay, that's better than the ad hoc defensive structure that didn't really make any sense when you thought about it, but so? Even if it makes more narrative sense, it's just another monster camp. Oh, and of course, behind that I saw the goblins chatting, but of course, we won't ever know what they're saying like I complained about with the Los Alfos. Maybe we will later, but I'm just gonna be straight with you, I already don't trust Tears of the Kingdom to do that. I went to the exchange ruins, and there was nobody around except like some monsters walking nearby. Okay, just the same as before. And yeah, I made sure to go to that split mountaintop by Rito Village, the one that finally made me quit Breath of the Wild back in 2017, six years ago. And guess what? No random thunder sword, just a Korok seed now. Oh my god. The exact same Poe is still there? You can't make this up. Speaking of Korok seeds, I ran into Hestu on my way and confirmed the Koroks just don't remember me. He doesn't remember that I could see him. What? Yeah, I know you're Hestu. Are you a different Hestu? Are you Hestu Jr.? Like, we literally did this already. We literally did this already. But I guess when he does his little dance thing, there's other Koroks that show up. But it's cute once, and then you skip it every single time after. So that wasn't a fluke before or something? The Koroks really don't remember me. And the shrines from Breath of the Wild are gone, and same with the towers, and nobody so far has mentioned the Calamity or Ganon or the Guardian robots. Is this game trying to retcon Breath of the Wild out of existence too? What? I, I, I'm sorry. I genuinely don't know where to go from here. You, you can't be serious. Uh, look, I'm happy with how my previous script followed the general timeline of my playthrough, but I need to break script continuity again here for more spoilers because Nobody mentions the Divine Beasts either, nor the past champions or anything. You, you'd think a professional Breath of the Wild hero like me would be happy about this. And I mean, Eiji Aonuma said he wanted to make a game where people who didn't play the first one could pick this one up. But it, one, that's not really a new concept since most games do that with like a quick tutorial built into the first level and a recap of the last game's plot if it had one. And two, on Nintendo's own website, it says, this is a direct sequel! This isn't like Majora's Mask, where the game starts with Link literally leaving Hyrule, you know, being somewhere else, and being in the child timeline established at the end of Ocarina, where Ganon never took over. We're in the same damn map as Breath of the Wild, with the same assets, and some people being older to show time passing, but like, others not, so like, Rampage death. Which is it? How am I already complaining this much again? I really feel like I'm at a loss for words. I, I, I can't believe this. You know what? I think even counting Breath of the Wild, this is the worst thing I've seen so far in these games. More than the unexplained ruins, the master sword breaking, those dragons, or that stupid thunder sword on that mountain, at least the Koroks being repeated, was something to do. The lack of story was intentionally leaving room for mystery. The open design was at least intended to promote complete freedom. But this global amnesia, while still trying to say this follows Breath of the Wild, is just plain bad. It's not something you can say came from good intentions. It's just sloppy, amateur, pathetic, and bad. It's 
literally like we're given the second draft of someone's unpublished manuscript where they made major changes and replaced the villain with someone else and cut major plot points or condensed redundant characters. Maybe someone somewhere says the words divine beast, but that does not make up for this. In the same way that me missing the one time the Yiga are antagonists outside of their pointless inclusion with Vodnaboris, me somehow missing the sequel being a sequel is not okay. If you booted up Mass Effect 2 and suddenly nobody is mentioning the Reapers or the Geth, there's a brand new robot enemy that's doing the exact same thing as those two. Liara acts like she's never met you, while Garrus at least recognizes you, but doesn't really, you know, mention anything from Pharos or Ilos or, you know, whatever. And only like two NPCs on Ilium and Omega are like, oh yeah, the Geth. That was a pisser, yeah? I should not have to explain this. I can't believe this. There are people saying this is the singular greatest game of all time. That. Ah, come on. All right, that's fair. He's got the reach. Definitely don't look at the Tears of the Kingdom, Reddit. Why? Because everyone's like, oh, oh, that's on me. I wasn't paying enough attention. Oh, sorry. I distracted. That's okay. But why is it all like, oh my God, how did they do this? It's the, the pinnacle. Like, okay, like for sure. If it's fun for you, of course, of course. fine. Like, yeah. you can have fun with anything. You can have fun poking a dead dog with a like, stick. <laughs> that they're like, oh my God, 10 out of 10. Like, literally, like. You know, I don't think oh, he did it again. I'm not even picking. He's gonna do it again. He's gonna get me. Oh god, that's a bomb. That's a bomb. That's a bomb. Someone said it okay. is bold, incredible. It's the first time a game has fully realized the expression I've always dreamed of. What? Like, huh? It's an open world. The best game I have ever played. It's an. This open... might be the best game of all time. It's an. I dream about it. I play it all. Free waking hours. Then at work, I spend most of the time on this subreddit. At work? I don't get it. I. That's what I'm telling you. Like, people are from an alternate universe where this game fall lopped, you know? No way. There's no fing way. Hmm. What? There's no fing way. Yeah. I hope. Oh my god. No, these people are 100% serious. I don't think I'm speaking lightly when I say that humanity is forever changed. What? Calm down. What? Calm down. Okay? Calm down. Yeah, that's... Do you see now why, like, I keep playing this? Because I'm like, people really are... I'm sorry, but it's genuine insanity to hear that. Because it really... Way more challenging and complex. I remember I heard... Breath of the Wild. Not new. Exactly, but it's it new. He it says, one major praise is how each tier of the map has its respective resources. Sky Islands gets you Zonite charges. The Depths gives you Zonite. That's not But that's is not, that not like in new. almost every... That's literally in every single freaking open world game. Breath like of the like Wild the had Witcher, that. Like, the Witcher had that. Oblivion had that. Hearts, you gotta go to the swamps and shit. Exactly. <sighs> Yes, this is basically how I reacted in 2017. You said, no, I'm not alone now, right? Well, we're getting nowhere fast. Let's continue on the trek to Rito Village. For me, it's worse, cause before you would go to places where Link could conceivably have had a memory. Mm -hmm. And it was a little bit of an exploration thing to keep those things in mind and be like, I can, I can kind of piece together, okay, there's a giant mountain, you know, that's snow covered. Let's think about where there are giant covered snow mountains and look around that area for the memory. Mm -hmm. They just see, they have these giant like Nazca lines. Of course, there's just another shrine. Yeah. Oh yeah, with the rusty broadsword. But at this point, don't you have a bunch of that's probably better than that? Yeah. So why even bother? Why doesn't anybody go with Link to do anything? Right? Like, like he obviously came back from like an issue. Like, why don't they have like a little party? I mean, this is this, you know, obviously this is completely opinion, uh -huh. you know, but it's like, I feel like after all this stuff, like you keep saying all shit, and it's like, yo, like you haven't been around. You don't really know what's going on. Yeah, exactly. Why don't they have like a few people go with him or something like Isn't that? Isn't that why you had champions before? Yeah, right? 5 a.m. Dawn. Now that's the right time to wake up. Uh, <laughs> are you coming on to me? I don't think this bridge here is OSHA compliant. Excuse me, sir. Thank God you can still stun lock every freaking enemy. Okay, we finally made it to Rito Village. And the world ending tempest, the horrible blizzard leading to a famine in the city is. 
just some winter flurries? The way this game was hyping up this storm, I thought we'd get here and need to have something beyond a pair of generally warm pants that the player would probably have by now. You know, like the Tundra and Breath of the Wild that is literally a few stone throws from Rito Village. Seriously, how is a blizzard a big deal here? Like, I get those can be a problem anywhere that has winter, but it seems like everyone is saying that this storm is like putting the village in mortal danger and is genuinely out of the ordinary. There's no wind, no super freezing temperatures it literally just looks like it's winter in this town you know the one where you literally get warm clothing like how are y'all not prepared for this okay sure i appreciate how the bridge is out but like if the retail can fly then how would this really be obstructing any transportation into the city since you'd figure the retail would know how to fly everything in i mean they literally have a couple of launch pads now i appreciate that the kids have to run the town since the adults are out all gathering food and you know you see some retail on the path that i took towards the town that are like omg i need food for retail Town. But, you know, that's pretty normal for open world games to, you know, have NPCs who change their position and barks as you progress through the game. So, like, is this better than the non-issue of Va Meadow? Sure, but it's barely coming up to the level of any basic open world game, so, you know, this isn't really praiseworthy. Wow. So, in instead of giving the, the voice acting little 10 second cutscene to the guy who was in the previous game, you give it to some random kid who none of us have ever seen before? Really? Like, why did you have him record five seconds of dialogue just to have him go, ah, ah, oh, so can yeah, it. I can do it, Dad. Yeah, right. I like to hear that he's a little rebellious-ish. But, like, there's no way you don't have the money to do more voices. Wait, so in the previous game, there was a flying robot and none of you thought, oh my god, it's the ancient flying ship from our legend? What? Nobody brought this up? What? This is literally what happened with the Divine Beast. There was something over the Rito that village. They, that. they were like, oh, we can't get close to it because, like, the wind's too powerful. Or yeah, like, like, it was, oh, we can't get close to it because that's some f***ing lasers that were shooting at us. So here we are again, something over Rito village that you can't get to, you know. Oh, Furry bait. Yup. Pink, pink. Like, I don't have a problem with it, but, um, you is she a girl? Right. Is she a lady, Rito? <laughs> I'd cosplay as her. Yeah. <laughs> girl bird. Yeah. <laughs> Even as a shorter beat. Exactly. Yeah. Everything's all soft. Yeah. Also love how there is no mention of Rivali, the Divine Beast, where it went, or, you know, how in Breath of the Wild there was no mention of this Stormwind Arc that apparently needs to be prayed to because it saved you in a past calamity, but, you know, now we're gonna have it in Tears of the Kingdom? <sighs> Whatever. Let's go walk up a mountain. See, this is where the Tundra was in the previous game, where it was like you couldn't even go here mm -hmm. with regular cold resistance. You had to have, like, yeah, you know. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, but now it's, okay, so it's literally not as cold as it was before. So in order to get to the flying thing up there above Rito Village, we have to go into the tundra for a few steps, and rather than going over there, we go over here. You didn't help? This is in your territory. You didn't help build that? I'm falling asleep. Oh, uh, I do not blame you. Flag has frozen in the air while the tree branches are wiggling instead. Whoa. Look at that, the tree- oh. look. God, you can still stun lock every single enemy. Right. Yeah, I would. This this inventory choice though, that would me up so bad. I do appreciate though. It looked like um, he uh he ordered his bokoblins to form up a shield wall. Mmm. Why did you get so big? What you been eating, bro? Let me get some of that. Vitamin B12. Protein. Yes or no? I gotta get it back. Call me out, Link. Okay, one is let's continue with this thing. Exactly. The other one is no, I want to go find more treasure or some shit. Yeah. That's there's no personality there. Nothing. It's literally just yes or no. Yeah. So we get to the top of this mountain and help Tulin, who the wiki says was in Breath of the Wild, but I sure as heck don't remember him. But you know, whatever. We get it. Oh my God, he's a he's a rambunctious little boy. Mm -hmm. Can you say anything else about this? No, that's the entire character. It's a rambunctious little boy. <sighs> Seriously, just like in Breath of the Wild, more boring and one-dimensional characters. Just instead of Smugbird, 
bird, it's nine-year-old boy bird, who apparently has Revali's Gale, which no one brings up since that was a special ability that I thought Revali struggled to create on his own, but little Billy here just has it because reasons. Yeah, so it's different from Revali's Gale because Revali's Gale goes up. Ah, okay. And this one goes forward. So this kid's just an airbender. Nobody comes with us. You mean like characters in The Witcher 3 for story missions, or followers in Skyrim, or Medley the Rito in Wind Waker? Congratulations, it only took you 20 years to figure out how to do it a little better. Yeah, again, you don't get praise for the basics here. And so we go get his bow back by hitting one enemy once. I just had to hit it once? I just had to hit it once? Are you no, kidding me? No, no, no. It's only because it's it's a cutscene. Whenever you see them again... Oh, wait, is... You know, I keep... You keep trying to I be keep... helpful. Wait, this is literal again what they did in Wind Waker. You had the little bird dudes dropping off the Bokoblins. Then the NPC follower attacks enemies like literally any NPC follower before him and his hot-headedness gets resolved instantly. Yeah, like, we're legit getting an entire character arc for this kid the very second we meet him. Mm -hmm. It's just immediately brushed out of the way. God forbid we get any time we see anything from him. He's just, you know, hot-headed eight-year-old kid. Okay, he goes off and he gets his, he loses his bow. Mm -hmm. One person helps him out once and he's like, oh yeah, like, yeah. I'll work together with people, okay. <laughs> So instead of having this hot-headed kid go with Link and have that be the whole character arc, he just gets it immediately resolved. So we get all that troublesome character development out of the way first so that there's yeah. nothing getting in the way of okay. Link T-posing. <laughs> that could have been like an whatever. Are you kidding me? Did he really just say that? What did he say? We think this blizzard is coming from inside that cloud. 10 out of 10. Are you serious? I... So he has to either use Ascend or this kid's Gale. I think. I think a part of my brain just died from that. Yes, our intelligence shows that that fish must have come from the water. <laughs> They're bird brains. <laughs> Don't laugh at that. <laughs> Don't laugh at that. It's terrible. I'm sorry. I need a minute. I cannot believe someone was paid money to write, We think this blizzard is coming from that cloud. Really? I thought it was coming from the desert. Yo, I I'm genuinely angry that. about that. Not worth it. Honestly, man, I don't even know how to structure these videos anymore. Like, I'm kind of proud of my first impression since it had like a nice through line. And this one is a bit more disjointed, but there's like so much I'm cutting out from my experience here because there's so much wrong with this game and any positives are basically meaningless when put into context. I haven't talked about how the combat is still just dodge and hit or how there's so many more arrows now so why even hit dudes close up or how it's back to hit the Zelda weak spot, how they ruined my favorite enemy the like like or how they put Zelda bomb holes in the wells while also trying to avoid all Zelda conventions or how the shrines in their puzzles are just weak sauce generally like it is so hard to focus writing this script to make the horror show of this experience a coherent narrative but hey someone's got to push back and get all the endless sound out of tens. and honestly i do still like making these videos and giving you all at least some knowledge that you're not all alone i really wish i had that in 2017 oh well at least it'll make my upcoming A Hat in Time video all the more enjoyable, yeah? And speaking of Mario inspired, let's head on up to the most boring Mario level of all time. To be honest, going through this section isn't the most interesting thing. It's really just holding forward and maybe moving a block or hitting a Sheikah. I mean Zonai robot. But here's a few token reactions, though. We- No, really? We get it. That's why we're doing this. Are we not trying to get to the blizzard already? Hey, look at him. This kid's just waiting for me, too. He's just slowly flapping. Look at him. He's like, oh, my God, babe, it's the opposite of regular game. Mm -hmm. Where you're where you're. Uh, oh, my God. I'm the. <laughs> yeah, you're the. 
him. Oh no! Not, not fast enough. Yeah. To slow. He's like, uh, let's go. Can you fly her the f up? Jump from here. So they just threw out this this song like immediately, right as we went to the Rito. And now we're immediately getting it resolved. Look at him, he's like, oh, okay. So you're telling me if someone just found out King Arthur with his magic sword was real, y'all would just be like, oh, okay, I guess that's real now. All right, cool, whatever. Interesting. Yeah, I, why did you stop to say that? They already had the text pop up to do that. And they had the temperature gauge go down and I would start getting hurt. Try to keep up, nerd. Wee. <sighs> what the f is that? Does it do that every time? Yep. Donk. Yeah, all right. I'm gonna get so sick of seeing that. And, you know, using Ascend during this Mario level here was like the only time I really remembered to do that without a resonant quote reader here reminding me that I have it. I mean, I literally teleported out of this cave thinking there was just no way out because I forgot that I had Revali's Gale, I mean Tulin's Gust, I mean Ascend. That kind of reflects the entire other powers experience so far. I mean, I genuinely didn't know you could ride these rocks up to the sky because I didn't watch the gameplay trailer to go into this with like a fresh mind and felt there was just no need to experiment with this rewind power. I just figured they were there to collect Zonite or something like this robot said and I just never thought about rewind again. The only time I've used Fuse was to make new bomb wall smashers if mine broke since there are rocks everywhere or to make, you know, every single bomb and fire arrow. I've just scavenged weapons like the game basically wants me to do so going through the path Aesthetically designed process of dropping random items I picked up, equipping the weapon to which I'd like to fuse it to, activating fuse, and then finally clicking to fuse them after dragging the cursor over the item I dropped was just never needed. It's as meaningless of a choice as using a metal box to hit enemies or freeze them to push them off a cliff when you first left the plateau in Breath of the Wild. Tears of the Kingdom is just repeating Breath of the Wild's mistakes of having a million choices but not designing itself around them. I mean, maybe I'll find more uses for them later, but if these are the main USPs of your game, since so much of this is just a copy paste or palette swap or reaching the bare minimum standard of an open world, and I'm still not seeing a need to use them, I mean, sure, I've used the Magnesis 2 thing once or twice, but honestly, never more than I would have used like the Cryosis ability if I saw water. I move blocked to cross a gap or glue the two pieces of Impa's balloon together, like like, like I said, it's no different than picking up items in Half-Life. I'm a quarter of the way through your main game's plot, and I still haven't found a need to use the main USPs beyond helping some weirdo prop up a sign for the trillionth time when he's supposed to be working for a construction company. But we all know the main USP of Zelda was its dungeons. And I remember hearing during the build-up to this game that Tears of the Kingdom brings Zelda dungeons back. And I'd like to find whoever started that rumor so I can punch them in the gut for lying. Because, you know what, man? I'm just gonna say it. The Divine Beast was better than this joke. At least there was a central gimmick of moving the Divine Beast and using the wind or water of that associated area to solve puzzles. Not to mention that there's just a Another flying robot with cannons, but it's shaped like a boat instead of a bird, but nope. Totally not just a reskin of Breath of the Wild, right? Here though, you just walk around until you find an open door, then maybe dodge a laser or kill a dude. We'll put together the only two pieces sitting around, and then have Rabali do his gale, which he just tells you to do rather than you just figuring it out. How dumb do you think I am, Tears of the Kingdom? So I see it, then this kid says it, then this dude says it, then he says it again. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's four times I had to be told to open the locks. Like, sure. Was it neat to have to plug in the ice block onto the lever to open the door? Yeah, I guess for a second, despite how finicky it was to do that. But if, you know, you figured that out, then doing the one underneath the boat with the gears is just busy work. Like hitting the bats or the Zonai robots who you fought a hundred times before this. Like maybe you have to fly around until you notice that the doors on top of this pillar can be opened with Magnesis too. But that's it. Noticing I can open a door and then dodge a few lasers. Okay. And don't get me started 
on this boss. Olgera? Yeah, like... Is he something cold? Right? Not only is this buggy super hard to see, being gray and white on a gray and white background, this is literally just a dragon fight from Breath of the Wild. They sail around, it provide you with an updraft, you hit the weak points, they throw out some damage orbs, and they hurt you if they touch- oh wait, no, it doesn't hurt you if you bump into this guy. I thought we wanted to throw out Zelda conventions, but hit the weak point! Like, sure. It throws up some tornadoes too, and disappears into a vortex like the dragon did to pop out without hurting you. The ice attack can be a bit of a challenge to dodge, but if all it's doing is offering incremental improvement on something that was so broken in Breath of the Wild to the point where it's, at best, another Zelda boss fight that we've had like a hundred of for 30 years, that's not really a plus. Ferrari wouldn't get points for selling me a Honda Civic if the previous model was a horse and buggy and the model before that one was a Ferrari. This is the Sage of the Winds. You know, the guy who was trapped or something mm -hmm. in this divine beast. Oh. And this is this kid's descendant. You mean like the descendant from the, the hero dude, who, right. uh, the divine beast? So it's literally the same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, look. Oh, here's this. Oh, here's this imprisoning war we had with Ganon. And this whole Again. war is just one. You just see one fight. Boy, wonder who that is. Is it Ganon? Right. Look, here, here's the, the four champions, like from the Divine Beast, the Goron using the exact same sword, the Zora using the exact same spear. Mm -hmm. This guy may as well be Link. I mean, he is now. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and then it's like, oh, we were losing, and then Raru did a, a magic thing that is never explained. They don't even say what it is. Oh, so he did exactly what Zelda did. Yeah, exactly. Oh, if this is what every area is like, we are in for a rough time. Well, at least unlike 2017, I now have an outlet for my complaints, and you can all see you're not alone in thinking this game is overrated to hell and back. I swear, this game is a dimensional nexus where those of us who cannot comprehend the 10 out of 10s are from the universe where Breath of the Wild flopped hard, but we got glitched into the Breath of the Wild 11 out of 10 universe for some reason. I don't know. Maybe Tears of the Kingdom does get better. Maybe you'll find more fun stuff. Maybe the next dungeons are the real dungeons, or it's just me who didn't find a need for the main gimmicks. Or maybe it'll be like when I said that after beating Breath of the Wild and only found that Thunder Sword. But You'd figure you'd want to make the first quarter of your game fun so people play the rest. You'd figure you'd want to make the base strategies, play styles, and overall challenges of your game centered around the new mechanics because otherwise, what was the point? And it'd be like spending most of your time on the building or driving mechanics of a platformer. Speaking of, I heard the Magnesis 2 compared to Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, which I actually haven't played, so for next time, I'll try to do that, or you know, at least watch a long play, to see if Tears of the Kingdom is getting praised for being a groundbreaking physics masterpiece by copying something that's 15 years old. Which wouldn't surprise me. The bare minimum, oh, the snow goes away, and then it goes back to looking like it did in Breath of the Wild, which was supposed to be a ruined world. But yeah, it looks normal now, which is fine, I guess. Yeah. So, are you, so is it literally just the same thing? You're just freeing all the mm -hmm. all the villages? Yeah. So that, what, you guys can... What was the point of it in Breath of the Wild, even? Oh yeah, wasn't it the video where you didn't even have to do all that shit and you can no. still go fight Ganon? You can still go fight Ganon. The only thing was that, like, you get the Divine Beast and they do a magic laser thing that takes off half of Ganon's health. Right. It's like, okay. And then you still, man, do you yeah. see why I'm like, I don't even want to sit here and watch this, like... It's a joke, man. And it's like, I appreciate then, like, a little later, like, okay, look, here are other characters coming in who couldn't make it into the town before. Oh, look, now they're bringing in the food that couldn't come in before. Don't know why it couldn't come in before, but okay, this fine. It's a blizzard. Yeah, a blizzard would just look like snow when you're literally right next to a tundra. It's literally, like, telling and not showing. It, like, that's exactly what it is. Like, it would have been cool if, if, like, they had a bridge or something, or... I know, but something where it was like, yo, like, if we, we can't walk across this bridge with how this wind is going, I like, mean, you're gonna lose all your food, you know what I'm saying? There literally was a bridge that was broken into the town. So there you go, so like, they could have just showed and said, like, yeah, man, that, like, we need to get this food in there, you know? Yeah. Such, like, if they had them all on the other side, mm -hmm. then we could have just seen that. And, like, I appreciate that this bridge was out, you know, so that made things a little bit harder, and when you go across... These people are like, oh, we need to rebuild the bridge. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, you should go find that dude who has a construction company. He can help with this bridge. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. But it's like, exactly. It's just the, 
it's just the bare minimum of them putting these guys in this area and it's like okay it's different now and it's like that's good but every other game did that before yeah, you like, so just, it's just better because breath of the wild didn't have it exactly like it's I, not I can't good on its own because we've seen that so many times before in other games yeah like uh again like with with the witcher right where you see all the people kind of stacking up outside of uh Novigrad. Or, yeah, outside of Novigrad, because as you see, like throughout the game, as the war mm-hmm. gets worse and worse, see more and more refugees. Yeah. Nobody has to say, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. there's a lot of refugees because the war's getting worse. Like, no, you can just see it happen. Exactly, That's and the people are basic. there, like, hey, let us in. Yeah, like you, you know? see that. Like, so we supposed to give this game like a ten out of ten because you know, oh, something that was blocking food from coming in is gone, so now the food gets to go through. Like, okay, that's expected. Obviously, it's exactly. gonna happen. Again, it's They're bare just, minimum stuff. It's the bare minimum stuff, so it's like, even though I want to say, like, okay, let's end on a high note, it's just a... It's, it's, it's a just high a, note for this. It's a high note for Breath of the Wild, but a high note for Breath of the Wild is just coming back up from it's underground. Coming, yeah, coming back up to standard. Which, I mean, like, the game's coming down from the lofty heights and... Be quiet. Okay. Good night, everybody. But remember to work on your dreams today, because you can do it, whatever it is. Eh, close enough.